Woo, look at all that man glitter. That's what I'm talking about. One of these days I'm going to need to get some dust collection going. Anyways, here in Lathe Town, one of the most important things that you can do for yourself is to have sharp tools. Now, I don't know about you, but I ain't got a lot of cash. And I have Butterfingers. Uh, little plug here, Butcher Block Conditioner, great stuff. Carnival Wax, Beeswax, Mineral Oil, it's all in it. Okay, so I started turning about a year ago and I did not realize that when you turn a piece, you're going to have to sharpen your chisels a lot, a whole lot. Otherwise, they won't cut. They're like a dull knife. So I cannot afford uh, $250 for some kind of weird jig that fits on a grinder that chisels everything at the right angle and the blah, blah, blah. So I went and I got YouTube certified, just like you're probably doing here. Now, there's a lot of guys out there that will show you the true, proper, and correct, right, safe way to do things. I am not that guy. I will tell you where your safety glasses. I will tell you, uh, get you some ear protection because I know we're all guys and we think that we're super tough, but it only takes one time to blow your eardrums or do damage. It doesn't heal up. And when some sweet young thing is in your ear going, just and you're going, what, what, huh? That's not sexy. So protect your ears, man. Do yourself a favor. Anyway, the video today is all about how to sharpen your chisels. So uh, when I was on YouTube, getting all YouTube certified, you guys see where I put that chisel? Yeah, I said it over here. Uh, somebody, and I wish I could remember who, uh, they said that your bull gouge, he likes it about a 50 degree cut. So that's what I did. And then somebody else I saw said that you can do that without a grinder. You need 120 grit sandpaper on an orbital sander if you can get the right angle. So that's what I did here. So what I did was I found this 4x4 and a 2x6. And I took the 4x4 and I cut this and I cut here so that my chisel can fit in the hole just like that and when I turn this on it starts vibrating and spinning and all I have to do is rock my chisel back and forth and look at that oh my gosh you almost can't screw up almost I'll show you here in a second how I did actually I'll just tell you now if you look at this it's riding on the sandpaper Here's good, because you can see this side because you're standing over here. But when you twist it this way, you can't see how far that you are digging into the sandpaper. And it only takes dip, that much more. And it digs in, and all of a sudden, since this is spinning, you've just <laughs> tore a big old spot out of the sweet spot of your sandpaper. Which ruins that sheet. And... It's not crazy expensive, but it's kind of inconvenient, and you'll feel like a goober, especially if somebody's watching. So, this is 50 degrees. I notched it here in case you've got a big fat handle. You can nothing's in the way. Uh, you don't need it to be this thick. Actually, you could probably leave it this thick. Sorry if I wasn't filming that; I couldn't see. You probably could leave it this thick. And let me turn you around here. And do a 50 degree angle here and maybe like a 35 degree angle here if you want like a big sweeping bowl gouge angle instead of the like a little toenail angle like I've got here but that's that's for the next video I guess but anyways I took a uh, just a square and there's a little 50 degree check right there and you just mark your board Cut this level with your sanding surface. Find your 50 degrees, make a line. And then before you screw all this together, uh, just take your block. And I, what I did was my 50 degrees, I made a, I tried to make a true square T right here so that when I stuck it on the old drill press, I could tilt the block and just drill straight down and make my exact 50 degrees. So, Anyways, it worked out pretty good, and I just took a 2x6, 
screwed to the bottom of my 4x4. That holds everything solid. And I have this little vise, and I just, uh, that's just a palm sander. I flipped it upside down, screwed it in there pretty tight where it can't wiggle. One thing I will suggest you do, because it's kind of important, is don't throw it on there, but set a uh, level on there and level it a couple of ways and try to get it, boy, I need a cameraman. Try to get it as level as possible when you're chucking this down, when you're cinching that down to your vise. And these, you know, find out what your level is and cut this level with that so that when your tool comes through, it's hitting at the exact 50 degree uh, situation. But anyways, I'll kick it on for you and let you see how it works. You try to keep it going without stopping it so that you don't end up with flat spots in your chisel. But just go back and forth nice and smooth so that no area gets very hot. And you don't get any flat spots. So I just do that a little bit here and there and then back it out kill that switch and then looky there I've got a nice little sharp edge and that will cut right nicely for a little while so uh, there you go homemade that's about a maybe 50 cents worth of four before and a chunk of scrap that's long enough that this and this can be on the same board so that it's all on the same playing field keep it level keep it true to the degrees that you want and uh, 120 grit orbital sander you can pick these up at any wally world for about 20 bucks tack of these or maybe three or four dollars um if you don't have a vice, I don't know what to tell you. Find a vice. Go to yard sale uh, once the corona thing's over. And there you go. So I just saved about 250 bucks off of the uh, sharpening jig. And I hope you can use this to get you by until you can sell some bowls or whatever and afford the good stuff. Hit the button. Subscribe and do the thing. Helps everybody out. Be well.